Hello, and welcome to Quick Tips. Some quick Tips concerning communication during a crisis situation. The first tip, don't sit on this information. Rather, if it's going to come out, get out in front of it and uh, address the situation head on. Has this process caused groundwater contamination? There are clearly cases. When we try to find out what chemicals are used in the fracking to get the yield, we can't divulge that. Why? I, I think it's a bunch of bullshit, to be honest. Oh, okay. Yo, yo. Just like Coca-Cola may have a mix of these four chemicals. Many of which we know are known carcinogens and dangerous agents. A surfactant, a biocide, sand, of course. Um, no. <laughs> that's so yeah. silly. I've got them down. Just like Coca Cola. Fracking, 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 fracking. There are clearly cases. One issue is the chemicals that are used by the companies with, that are injected. Contamination of the air with volatile organics. The radioactivity. Brine that, that uh, has heavy metals in it and uh, radioactive uh, elements and bullshit. There isn't any um, wastewater treatment plant in the country that can actually clean that. Uh, type of uh, contaminant. So what do you not do with true, it? What do you do with true, it? Not true. Well, some of it's true. Bullshit. Just like Coca-Cola. There are clearly cases. The DEC has, under cover of secrecy, scoped and carried out a health review of some kind. It's actually not a health study. That no member of New York's scientific community has seen. Two of the three of them have signed non-disclosure agreements. And now a gag order prevents them from speaking to me about data that I, as a New York scientist, am not allowed to see. Thus, the health of 19.5 million New Yorkers depend on the results of a secret review of a secret review. We are not uh, adequately protecting the health of the people of New York. I, I think it's a bunch of bullshit, to be honest. Okay. Okay? Bullshit. But you made a couple of other erroneous statements. The draft regulations we're considering today on high-volume hydraulic fracturing probably violate the State Uniform Administrative Procedures Act since they're being presented ahead of their guidance documents which are supposed to inform them. They're not too early. They're 20 years too late. Not true. Not true. New York still lacks the rules package that was supposed to follow the 1992 GEIS. Wow. Some of it's true. Bad news. Well, what about the original GEIS and the regulations they were supposed to do with that? It's a, it's a loaded question. Because what you ask is a loaded question. And how can they really just promulgate regulations when they haven't even done the seeker analysis for what the environmental impacts are? Bullshit. And we're also giving some deal of thought to challenging every single gas drilling permit that the DEC issued without having these regulations in place as completely arbitrary, capricious, and unauthorized by law. Then a million gallons of water comes down here under pressure. With the, with the four things. Please up. Not diesel. With the, with the four things. Please up. With the four things and sand. Just like Coca Cola. How could the wells hydraulically fractured across New York State in the Queenston, Medina, Ariskin, Herkimer, Oneida, Clinton, and other tight sands, how could they possibly have been permitted legally without the regulations package, which never materialized following the adoption of the Generic Environmental Impact Statement in 1992? And it's not the job of DEC minerals. Governor Cuomo, are you getting the message? Come on, give us a fracking break. We in the Southern Tier have been living in a state of terror for the last two fracking years. Every couple of months, we keep hearing, oh, the S case is going to be released. There's going to be permits soon. We're going to frack you soon. Just five counties.
And then we, what do we do? We get on buses, we run to Albany, we make phone calls, we write letters, we attend public hearings, we make substantive comments on regulatory documents. We're a little tired of it. We've been living in terror of this and this and this and this. Oh, and this and this and this and this and this. People don't want to be poisoned. So can you give us a fracking break? We want a two-year timeout on this whole fracking nonsense. And we're confident you're going to do the right thing and take action to protect the health and safety of New Yorkers. Especially once you realize you've been given some bad information. Like from this guy. Fracking, 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 fracking and, which we see close division on among voters. Uh, evenly divided on fracking and have been for a year. That is way wrong. So there is news today in the New York Post that uh, the governor helped the IDC draft legislation surrounding the moratorium on fracking. Um, do you think that uh, that's a surprise? The issue of fracking is a lose-lose for the governor. Siena polling and polling from my friends at Quinnipiac and Marist over the last couple of years have all shown the same thing. Voters of this state are virtually evenly divided on the issue of fracking. No! Just a darn minute, chum! It's fracking bullshit. Any truthful statement must match observations. Any scientific poll should match reality as it can be measured or observed. Politicians hate that because no matter what he decides, nearly half the people of the state are going to be upset with his decision. Bzz. A supermajority of voters enjoy clean air and water. My advice to the governor would be ignore the politics of it, and that's what the governor claims he's doing. My advice to the governor is to carefully seek out multiple information sources. Yes, okay, ignore the politics of influence, but do not ignore the voice of the people. If you want to know how the Southern Tier feels about being fracked, are you going to listen to this guy, or are you going to come and find out from us? As a matter of fact, the Southern Tier was polled on the issue by none other than Senator Tom Libis. You know, of safedrillingnow.com? I guess we know where he stands on the issue, huh? Well, Senator Limbus polled the people of his own district, which is Shenango, Broome, and Tioga County. And guess what he found out? That nearly 60% of all the people who responded to the poll felt that the DEC was not doing enough to protect the health and safety of New Yorkers. Now here's the real irony. Tom Libus is a cancer survivor. And do you think that Tom has made the connection between cancer and uh, toxic materials in the environment? So, here is a cancer survivor, my friend Tom, who is inviting this dangerous and dirty industry into this area that is certainly going to increase the amount of cancers in this area. His own constituents don't trust the government's ability to safely regulate this industry. Yet Tom is running around in Albany doing his darndest to block the Senate moratorium bill from reaching the floor and reaching a vote. So the first call to action we're going to make today is we're going to ask you to call the office of Senator Tom Libus and ask him to pass the damn moratorium bill because we're sick of this we're sick of these games we're sick of living in terror the majority of the people of this area don't want this so please call senator tom libis at any of the following numbers you got your pen ready okay here we go 607-773-8 Eight seven seven one, Tom Libus. There, here's his number again: six zero seven 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 three eight seven seven one. Call him up, and here's what to say: pass the moratorium bill in the Senate. 
stop trying to block the two-year moratorium bill. Let's get it moving. Let's get a vote on it in the Senate. We want a two-year moratorium. Please, Tom, we want to stop future people from getting cancer. We don't want to get cancer in the southern tier. We don't want gas drilling to come. We want a two-year moratorium. Please pass the two-year moratorium, 607 773 8771. You can also call these other two numbers, and I encourage you to call every number. Here's his Albany office, 518-455-2677. That's 518-455-2677. Here's one more number for you. If you want to write this down, this is a toll-free number, 877 8 Five four two six eight seven. That's eight seven seven eight five four two six eight seven. All these numbers are for Senator Tom Libus. Call him up and say, "Let's get the two-year moratorium bill passed in the Senate." Tom Libus is currently blocking this from going through. Give him a call and remind him that 57% of his constituents don't want fracking. The bottom line is the governor is going to take a political hit as a result of fracking no matter what he decides. So there are actually many ways to measure the size and the growth of the people working to stop the environmental destruction which fracking is causing everywhere it's, it's being used. And here are just two, and we're gonna we're gonna plot them on a graph. One is the number of local town bans and moratoria, and the number of public comments received on various regulatory documents. So just to recap, January of 2009 is when Norma Fiorentino's well blew up in Dimmick, Pennsylvania. January 2010 is when Gasland was first released. And the first New York bans really started getting underway in early part of 2011. By the time we get to July 2011, we have eight town bans and 10 additional towns that have passed moratoria. By the time we get to January 2012, we have 21 town bans and 40 moratoria. And by the time we get to July 2012, we have 30 town bans and 87 moratoria. And then by January 2013, we've risen to 48 bans and 101 moratoria. Does this look like the voters are split on the issue? Now, to add the next dimension, the number of public comments received, we're going to cut over to John Armstrong of Frack Action. He's talking on the Alan Chartok show, Capital Connection. Well, in 2009, first we saw a record chattering 13,000 comments. Then in 2011 into 2012, over three months, we saw a record shattering 66,000 comments. Most recently, when the proposed regulations were released over the holidays this past winter, uh, in December, we saw just this overwhelming record shattering beyond any expectations, more than 200,000 comments opposed to fracking. Really? 200,000? days. Wow, 200,000. Wow. Uh, and that's over the holidays, you know. Yeah. People are sitting around for a Christmas dinner writing comments on these regulations about why fracking would threaten their health. Evenly divided on fracking and have been for a year. Evenly divided on fracking and have been for a year. Evenly divided on fracking and have been for a year. It's not true. This is exponential growth. I'm urging everyone in the Southern Tier to call you, Governor Andrew Cuomo, and deliver this message. Here's the numbers for Governor Andrew Cuomo. 518-474-8390. That's 518-474-8390. 
If you can't get through on that number, try this one. 212-681-4580. Once again, 212-681-4580. That's his New York City office. And then there's always toll-free 866 584 Six seven nine nine. Once again, that's toll free eight six six five eight four six seven nine nine. Be polite, but please ask the governor to give us a fracking break. No fracking permits until the health studies are done. No permits until the health studies are done. Eight six six five eight four six seven nine nine. Put this number on your cell phone and call every day, Monday through Friday, from 9 to 5 p.m. Call 866-584-6799 and tell the governor no fracking until the health studies are done. This is really important, people. Thank you. Look, you have it on both sides, right? People need jobs, and people don't want to be poisoned. 